growing up playing Minecraft so much, I was always super fascinated by the fact that people are able to make like such crazy things out of redstone. Like I remember downloading maps and finding out that people had made computers, and this was insane to me. Well, after a lot of uh, after a, watching a bunch of YouTube videos, I finally figured out how it was done, and I decided to recreate uh, a computer, an eight bit computer in uh, one of my favorite games, Little Big Planet. And so here I have a program, or I have a computer that's uh, I programmed right now. It's uh, it's got a uh, Fibonacci sequence in it, and uh, so that's what's going on in the background. We're just seeing Fibonacci sequence running. Um, and actually, I'll just go through and I'll stop it really quick, and we can I can kind of walk through the process of loading in a program, and then I'll go step by step and can watch it go. So I'm just going to clear all the memory. That's what this button does right here. So every the computer is completely blank. There's nothing loaded in whatsoever right now. And so I can just take any uh, program I want. So let's take this one right here, for example. This will multiply the numbers three, or the number three by the number five. So I can just plop this into the programmer that I've made. And um, I can then turn the programmer on just by going right here. So the programmer is now on. And then uh, I can start loading the program. And so what, what this does is it'll automatically go through each layer of this chip and load the data into the memory. And you can see it's selecting um, you can see which memory cell is selected, and it just goes through and loads it in. And then once it's done, it, it turns the whole programmer, programmer off, and the computer is ready to begin. So uh, the way this thing works is uh, the program is stored in a bunch of binary instructions, and I actually have the specification for it right here. So uh, if I were to put uh, uh, four zeros into uh, one of the memory addresses, that will be a no-op, which basically means nothing will happen. I'll have, uh, maybe I'll try to link this so that people can kind of go through if they're uh, more curious to kind of read over this in particular, because I don't want this video to take forever. But uh, yeah, so uh, here's all the micro instructions and <laughs> all this random stuff. All of this, all of this I learned how to do because of the, uh, the video series that I linked. Anyway, so I can just uh, turn this on, go into automatic mode, and it'll just start flipping through the uh, flipping through the execution. So I can only get this thing to run at, uh, I believe it's, well, I can only do five instructions per second, or five, not instructions, right, I wish, uh, five micro instructions per second. I, uh, I, I can get, I can generate a pulse that's even faster than this, but unfortunately what happens is the, uh, the computer just kind of breaks. And so you can see right here, these are all the instructions that are being executed. And this little, uh, this little indicator right here shows which micro step it's on. Um, because something like, for example, uh, if, we take, uh, if we take the load A instruction, which loads uh, a value from, the a reg or from a register into A, uh, it has these micro instruction steps that are listed here. And as you can see, now that the program is finished, we get 15 as a result. And uh, I'm actually just going to run this again. Um, actually, I have to re reload it. Um, so actually, I'll load in a different one then. So let's turn off the computer. And uh, this computer also has input, so I wanted to kind of show that off. So uh, this one right here will multiply two inputs. So I'll just take the chip, and I'll put it in place. And then I can go through, and I can uh, turn the programmer back on again. Unfortunately, this does take a little bit of time. Um, I'm designing a circuit. Uh, which is right over here, that is a cartridge module. So uh, the idea is you would hook up a ROM chip to the right side of this, and then whenever you want to run a program, you would just boom, plug it right in. And uh, then uh, I can just load it in a lot easier, a lot more automated, kind of like uh, how like a game cartridge would work. Uh, all right, so it's done working. Oh, you know, actually, I've made a mistake, and I forgot to clear off uh, my program counter and then the uh, memory instruction register. So hopefully this works. Um, all right, so I'm going to run this. Usually it's best to clear the entire computer, but uh, yeah. All right, so as you can see, this red light has come on. That means input is pending. So that means it's waiting for me to input something. So let's just say we're going to multiply four by two. So I have four set up, which uh, I'm, yeah, this is by, this is binary for four. <laughs> I, I won't go into the binary tutorial today. Uh, anyway, so I can turn this on, and so there you go. It sent that value in, and then it kept going for a second, and now it's pin pending for another input. And so I can go through, and let's, uh, as I said, let's do two. So turn this, turn that one off, and then turn this on. And so there's binary for two. And uh, then I can toggle this, and now it's running. Do, 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 do. 
And so this will take a little bit. Um, it won't display it until the very end, but I can kind of go along, tell you what's happening. So uh, it's loading instructions. These instructions then get brought onto the bus. The bus then goes right over here. This is where all of the instructions are interpreted. So the four, uh, the four lights that are blue on the left side, uh, those are the actual um, instruction. And then the four on the, uh, the, sorry, the left side is the blue and that's the instructions. And then the ones on the right side are the actual, the conditional uh, data about it. So for example, it might re uh, refer to a certain register. Oh, well, it appears something went wrong. Uh, you know, that happens sometimes. Let me, uh, let me just restart the computer. Unfortunately, uh, oh, and it's, uh, it's still in the run mode. <laughs> um, yeah, let me, uh, I'll just set this back up and run it again. Um, not, as I said, some things can go kind of weird if I don't completely reset the computer. I just kind of forgot. Um, so I'll just let this program and I kind of talk about it while it's doing this. So, uh, oh, by the way, these are just seven segment displays. So, uh, that's how this is being displayed right here. Um, I was thinking about making a dot matrix display, um, and I have some plans for it, but, uh, I didn't want to uh, expand the scope of this uh, this version 1.0 too far. Uh, maybe if I uh, get around to doing a second version, that'll be a feature I add. Anyway, so it's waiting for the input again. So I'll just put this one in. So I have two and boom, I put that in. And now it's asking for another input. Uh, and I'll put in four this time, well, four again. So something went wrong, I guess. Um, anyway, so, uh, so well, this is running the background. So yeah, it, take, it reads an instruction. And then the instruction goes onto the bus, which comes right to here. Um, it then takes the uh, the instructions to the blue bit. It combines it and goes into these uh, into the different stages. And these stages are all wired up. Um, the way Ben Eater does it in his video uh, video series is a little bit different than I have it. Um, this was actually just a little bit more convenient for a little big planet. Um, he uses programmable uh, EE proms. Oh, and there we go. There's our answer. So we had two. Oh wait. It was total. <laughs> I, I think I just misread it. I thought it said zero before. I think it was totally eight, wasn't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, the way this thing works, and uh, actually just to show this off, I'll put in uh, Fibonacci's number or Fibonacci generator, so that way uh, we can have some continuous values while I kind of talk over this. Um, so then from there, the way it works is uh, the instructions kind of go um, through uh, through those kind of uh, multiplexers, they're called. And, uh, and that's when, uh, that's what it kind of decides, like what it's going to do for each step. And I can kind of, once again, this go, there's a lot more detail in the uh, series by Ben Eater. So I would heavily recommend checking that out. Um, but, uh, each one of these things controls a different piece of the, uh, computer. And so what happens is depending on what stage I'm in. So stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five. Um, I don't actually use five or six, as you can see, but apparently four either. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That That is how I did it. This is in case I wanted to have longer instructions, but I did never end up using those. Um, so we're ready to run at this point. So I'll just get this running. And so it'll start doing the Fibonacci numbers. So zero and then up from there. Um, yeah. And so uh, these little instructions right here control uh, read ins and read outs of the various different parts. So for example, the AI is A in and then AO is A out. So that's when A should be read the register A. That's when you should read a value in register A. And this is when you should read a, a value out from register A. And then the same thing for B, B in, B out. Um, and then this is for the uh, memory. Um, so let's take a look up here. So this is the actual ALU. This is where the math that it can do is, is done. And so what it can do is take the values that's held in the yellow up here and add or subtract it with the values that are hold, held down here. So uh, the red values are actually what the result is. And so uh, we can, I can also do subtraction with this, but as you can see, it's the, the yellow bulbs when they're added to the top bulb. Um, that's what you get in red. Um, and then that can be read out of the bus. And so that's how it's uh, reading these values. Um, just uh, for development, I guess I can kind of show uh, a little bit more of what, uh, what's, uh, what I've been doing. So I'll just keep this running um, kind of in the bottom corner of my screen while I show this off. Um, so, uh, have this as well to show, um, so this is an emulator that I, uh, that I, uh, made to kind of help the development process. Um, so as we can see, so as you can see here, there is this, uh, the block, uh, the, <laughs> the code, right. Uh, in the kind of bottom middle left. Uh, 
So this right here is an actual like program that I would use. Uh, this is the assembly version, although you can also, uh, it, I have a compiler that brings it into the binary code that actually is used on the computer, but this is just so much more human readable, so I use this instead. Um, so uh, as you can see, uh, these are the instructions. So the very first line, the R0, is what's going to be loaded into register 0, and that just is load 14, and then subtract 12, uh, jump jump carry to 6, and or jump conditional, rather. Um, and so these are, this is the instructions that's actually used to multiply 5 by 3, which was a, one of the first programs we saw. Uh, and then over here, we have the compiled binary, and this is what it looks like in uh, hexadecimal. And uh, I can actually show off this uh, this one running if I go over to the emulator that I wrote for this. Uh, so select the program that we want to run, and I'm just going to select the multiplication. And uh, this is step by step. Uh, this is in step mode, so I can just kind of go through and press enter. And as I do, uh, this is each micro instruction. So you can see at the very top uh, what it's doing at the moment. So this is right now it's executing this instruction. And now it's the post execution step, which is how it uh, starts off the next like cycle, um, which so then it fetches, then it decodes the instruction, then it executes it, and then there's a post-execution step. It kind of depends on the specification shown on the right side. So, for example, um, we're doing the sub R uh, or sub R12. So we have this. So we have phase zero, and then phase one, and then phase two um, is how I call it. Um, so in phase zero, we always execute the micro instructions MI and CO. And so what that what that does is that takes the counter, the program counter, which just, uh, you see this little arrow um, on the, uh, there's a little arrow right here. This little arrow um, is the pointer to which memory address is currently being read. Um, that is what is the uh, program, uh, the program counter is what's pointing to that. So it counts from zero to 15 to determine which one it wants to be, uh, which one it wants to read. And so, uh, um, the idea with it is the very first thing that happens every cycle is we will read in the value that's in this register. So the reading or read in, actually this is the, sorry, this is the program counter or the program counters up here. This is what's in register. It's been a bit since I took a look at this, honestly. Um, anyway, so this is what it's reading in, zero, one, which this is hexadecimal. So it's not just one, it's zero. So four zeros and then zero, 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 one. Um, and so uh, it will read that in, and then that'll interpret that as an instruction. And so that instruction that it's going to interpret it as would be LDA. So if we see, if we go to the next section, we should see LDA coming in again. Oh, actually, that was the one that was already done. So now we're on 9.6, uh, which would bring in the, the jump conditional. Um, and so, yeah, we can kind of just run through this. If you want, if you're curious about any of this, uh, I can kind of make a more in-depth tutorial about what I've done here specifically. But uh, as I've been saying, this is covered like really extensively in the uh, Ben Eater series that I'll make sure to link. Um, but yeah, so as I kind of, I'll just kind of skip along. Um, this is, it's going manually, so I have to hold the enter key to get it going. But uh, once we skip for a while, we'll kind of see it's getting towards the end. And so I'll kind of go a little bit slower. And so the output, you can see uh, the output listed right here. It's still re reading zeros. And that's because nothing's been written out to it. There's a lot of instructions that are actually involved in a multiplication step. And so there you go. So now it's output. And so the in, uh, the output right here is 0f, which equates to 15. And so that's uh, that's how we do the multiplication. Um, but yeah, so if, uh, oh, actually, I, I can also probably try to put these documents out too. If anyone wants to try to write any uh, programs for this, uh, just note that uh, I only have, well, so these are the instructions that can be used. And uh, it is self-modifying, so you can make the, the code modify itself. But I only have 16, um, 16 bytes of storage. So uh, yeah, um, OK. I think that's pretty much all I want to show. And as you can see, the Fibonacci number is still going on in the background. <laughs> it's uh, quite a neat uh, little, uh, little program. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about making some improvements to this. Uh, I kind of wanted to go over them. I guess this would be a good way to end the video. Um, so I wanted to have like an external dot matrix display. So that way I could, uh, and with its own separate like um, CPU driving it, because I've noticed that, well, the biggest issue with this is I can't run it any faster. I've tried everything that I can. Um, and so if anyone could figure out how to run these things faster, I can generate pulses uh, faster than what I currently am. So in theory, like this is this is the system that I'm using to drive it pulse wise. I could make a faster pulse, 
but unfortunately the uh, the whole program kind of decays if I do that like uh, it'll stop functioning for whatever reason um, it, it'll just it, it'll start missing signals I guess um, probably to do with synchronization which was kind of a, a thing that uh, or like the pulse width it, it's something that Ben Eater kind of goes into um, although he's dealing with actual technology or like you know physical <laughs> electricity not little big planet logic this is a little bit uh, out of his domain but uh, yeah, so I was thinking about making a dot matrix display. Uh, I just have to do a lot of research into that because uh, um, the big issues with upgrading things here is little big planet. Or you see that thermometer on the left side? Yeah, it uh, it's already you know it's it's almost halfway, and this is a pretty low low down computer. Um, so I wanted to upgrade the RAM bank so that I could have two hundred and fifty six bytes. Um, but to do it uh, would require well, I have some designs that are feasible. I've been testing them in other worlds, but. Uh, it's it's uh they're gonna be hefty um and so I have to cut cut uh, I have to save as much place as I as I can and uh, so if I want to do that display and the RAM uh it's gonna be a pretty hefty task anyways uh, so yeah let me know if uh, anyone has any uh, feedback to give on this because I'd love to hear it and uh, if anyone wants to see more just uh, you know let me know all right thanks so much for watching.